Hey guys, welcome to Mars or Bust. I'm Spaceman Dave, and my background may look a little different today because I'm standing here in the beautiful state of Washington. But today we're going to talk about spacesuits, past, present, and future, so stick around. I'll be right back. Please hit like and subscribe. It lets me know you're enjoying these videos. Spacesuits. A spacesuit is basically a human shaped spacecraft. Designed to keep humans alive in an atmosphere that doesn't have the needed air or pressure to support life. The first spacesuits were designed by a Spanish military engineer. This prototype spacesuit was built and tested in 1935, as well as overcoming all the challenges that were imposed. It protected the user from solar radiation, extreme temperature change, and extreme pressure, or lack thereof. It also had onboard oxygen, which gave the user two hours of breathable air. One of the suit's biggest issues was its mobility. This issue was overcome by the use of accordion-shaped parts like these. Today, there are multiple types of spacesuits. Each spacesuit serves a different purpose. The first spacesuit, worn by a human, was a Soviet SK-1 suit, worn by Yuri Degarin in 1961. This spacesuit was designed to be worn inside the spacecraft as a safety precaution to guard against loss of cabin pressure. This was also known as an IVA suit, or an intravehicular activity suit. Similar to these first spacesuits, the Mark IV suits designed for the Gemini program were also designed to be worn inside the spacecraft. And again, these suits had to deal with the mobility issue. This time, the issue was solved by elastic cords that would prevent the suit from ballooning. The Mercury suits were some of the lightest ever designed, weighing it at only 22 pounds. The first American spacesuit designed for spacewalking was successfully tested in June of 1965 by astronaut Ed White on a historic walk outside a Gemini spacecraft. This was a 21-layer suit that was adapted from multiple thinner-layer suits that were tested previously. As I said, a spacesuit is basically a miniature spaceship shaped like the human body. This protects the astronaut from the dangers of being outside the spaceship and in space. During a spacewalk, astronauts face many perils, from radiation to dust and debris and extreme temperatures. Temperatures can range from minus 250 degrees Fahrenheit to 250 degrees above zero Fahrenheit. These suits not only provide the correct temperature, but the proper pressure for the body and supply astronauts with water to drink and oxygen to breathe. Hmm, I wonder. Nah. Current day space suits that are worn outside the International Space Station are called EVAs or extravehicular activity suits. They're also called EVUs, or extravehicular mobility units. NASA is currently developing new spacesuits. These suits are designed for spacewalks during the Artemis program, also known as XEMUs, or Exploration Extravehicular Mobility Units. These suits will include several new features, but the suits also share many of the characteristics of the previous suits. There are two main parts of a spacewalk suit. The first is the pressure garment, and next is the life support system. Pressure garment is the human-shaped portion of the spacesuit that protects the body and enables mobility. The primary components of the pressure garment are the cooling garment, upper torso, lower torso, and the helmet. The cooling garment is the first piece of the spacesuit that an astronaut puts on. It's made with stretchy spandex material with water tubes running throughout it. About 300 feet of tubes are woven into this tight-fitting garment. It covers the entire body except for the head, the hands, and the feet. Chilled water flows through the tubes near the wearer's skin to regulate the body temperature and remove excess heat during the spacewalk. 
This is extremely important, being the spacewalks can last for many hours. Then vents in the garment draw sweat away from the astronaut's body and help with circulation inside the spacesuit. Next is the hard upper torso. This is lightweight but strong and connects inside the suit with the appropriate systems in the portable life support system. The upper torso of the new exploration suits will have a rear entry hatch to allow astronauts to climb in from the back of the suit. Being that astronauts must work in the suit and pick up objects while wearing the suit, the gloves protect astronauts from the space environment and are made so the spacewalker can move their fingers easily while working outside the ship. Being the extremities, like the fingers, are the part of the body that gets the coldest the quickest, gloves on space suits are equipped with heaters to keep the fingers warm while still allowing dexterity to use the tools. Next is the lower torso section. This section of the suit is made up of the spacesuit's pants, boots, and lower half of the waist closure. The part at the waist, called the waist bearing, helps astronauts move and turn. A metal body seal connects the lower portion of the torso to the hard upper torso. On the new suits that will be used for lunar surface missions, the lower torso includes advanced materials and joint interfaces that allows bending and rotating at the hips, bending at the knees, and hiking style boots. With this new mobility, astronauts will be able to walk on the lunar surface instead of doing the bunny hop that was developed by the Apollo moonwalkers. One of the most important parts of the suit is the life support system. On the back of the spacesuit is a backpack that holds the supplies and equipment to make the suit work. This backpack contains the oxygen that the astronauts breathe and that pressurizes the suit. A regulator in the backpack keeps the suit at the correct pressure. A fan circulates the oxygen through the suit and the life support system where the carbon dioxide that the astronauts exhale is removed from the suit. The backpack provides electricity for the suit and holds a two-way radio communication. The backpack also contains water for cooling the garment, a chiller to cool the water, and a pump to circulate that chilled water. Another important part of the suit is the helmet. The helmet on these suits serves as a pressure bubble and is made of strong plastic to keep the pressure of the suit contained. It also has a ventilation system that provides the astronauts with oxygen. The helmet also contains a small foam block that astronauts can use to scratch their nose, and I consider this one very important, as I've wondered what do you do if you get an itch on your nose. Have you ever had one and not tried to itch it? Just give it a try. It can drive you crazy. Outside of this bubble is a protective visor that keeps a pressure bubble from getting bumped or scratched. On top of that protective visor are the sun visor and the sun shades. The sun visor has a special gold coating that works like an astronaut's sunglasses. Together, the movable sun visor and the sun shade protect the astronaut from the sun's strong rays. Next are the suits that are considered the most stylish in the industry. No, not that one. Yes, that. The SpaceX IVA suits. These suits are designed for use inside the spacecraft, protect against decompression in case of an emergency. SpaceX suits are lighter weight than many of the others. These suits are weighing in at only 47 pounds. They also cost just a fraction of the NASA flight rated spacesuits. The NASA suits can cost as much as $12 million each. And pretty soon, SpaceX will have to come up with an EVA suit. I wonder what their EVAs will look like. Maybe like this? And in the future, what will the space suits look like? According to the new design by MIT, they'll be more form-fitting, with a stretchy pressure layer on the inside. But according to some engineers that work with Nexus Aurora, there'll be a hard outer layer. This hard outer layer will apply pressure to the inner layer, allowing the correct pressure to be put on certain areas where it's needed most. This hard outer layer will also be protection on the outside during EVAs. Regardless of the design they end up with, I guarantee they'll look a lot cooler than they do today. Now's the time for me to thank all these very important people. This is the mob. These are my patrons. These are some very special people. They're with me every step of the way. 
Thank you guys for everything you do. And you too can become one of the mob. Become a patron today. Check out the details in the description below.